In this tutorial, I'd like to show you about the new and enhanced features and functionality that are available in the Find and Replace functions of Microsoft Word 2011. In this version, not only is there better integration with the Mac OS, but there's also more contemporary ways of viewing things, as well as new features where you can actually replace formatting only, not actually text. So let's get started. So to get started, let's bring in some placeholder text. Now I've taken the liberty of grabbing some lorem ipsum text over here in the scrapbook. So let's just grab it from over here and place it into our document like so. Now, not surprisingly, we're seeing lots of red squiggly underlines, and that's, of course, because this is in Latin and we're expecting English, or at least Microsoft Word is expecting English. So don't let that bother you. If you're not familiar with lorem ipsum, this is just a common technique for using placeholder text, something that we sometimes do to represent real text when we don't quite have the final copy from the marketing department or legal department or, or whatever the case may be. Now, if you're tired of lorem ipsum, you've seen it lots before, you can just look around the internet. It's very easy to find very cute and interesting and funny variations. So feel free to do that too. It doesn't really matter what the text is at this point. It's just so that we have something to work with. All right, so let's jump in and let's find the find function. I know that's a bit of a silly pun, but the fact is that if you do look under the edit menu, that's kind of what you find here. It actually says find and find. So don't let, don't let that throw you. Alternatively, if you would like, you're always welcome to use the keyboard shortcut. That's a pretty good one to learn. Command F. Now, when you activate that, what happens? Not a lot seemed to have happened, but if we do look up here, we see, oh, here's my insertion cursor in this search field over here. So let me just close the scrapbook here so we can look at this a little more carefully. Now, right away, we can see this is quite a subtle and elegant implementation of the search feature, which actually mirrors the Mac OS uh, spotlight search feature as well. However, if we want to take a look at the options, then all we need to do is take a look at this little triangle over here. And we can see there's a couple of options here right away. And the first option says list matches in sidebar. So if you select that, this opens up more of an option panel, which is something we might be used to from other programs that will give us options on how to search. Needless to say, if all you want to do is close this right now, since you maybe have selected it by accident, all you need to do is press on this quite logical X button, and sure enough, it tells you close the sidebar. So let's open that again and have a look at one of the first things you want to do. Naturally, one of the first things you want to do here is probably start typing. So let's do that right now. Let's type in the word lorem. And now, excitingly, I don't even need to press enter, and already I'm shown some instances of where this text appears in the document. Now, this is really great because we're already used to this convention from mo most contemporary browsers and other software. All we need to do to navigate through these instances is to either select them here and immediately we have a bit of a highlight feedback option that shows us where we are. Alternatively, likewise, following the browser convention, you can simply navigate by clicking on the forward and the backward arrows here in the spotlight bar just above here. I should also point out that if you're not interested in seeing too many options at the moment and just interested in searching through your document for different instances, then you can just very simply click on this little triangle and collapse all those options for the time being. But rather than doing that right now, let's actually expand this and have a look at more of the options. By now, you're probably familiar with programs that have cogwheels, which also indicate settings. So let's have a look in the settings here and see what options are available. As you can see, there's one that's already ticked. That's on by default. That's the ignore case. So let's try that out right now. If we type in here, let's say a lowercase lorem, right away we can see that Microsoft Word is trying to find any instances of the combination of characters that I'm typing in here. So it's narrowing down the options as I type. And as you can see, it's, it's choosing this uppercase version over here as well as the lowercase version here, since I've asked it to ignore case. So that's working really well. If I turn that option off, then as we would expect, we would only find one instance which matches the exact case I've got here. So this is a way to force case sensitivity in Microsoft Word. So some of the other options we can see here are whole word only. Now, what does this do? Well, let's just turn it on and try it out. It doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference in this particular case. That's because we have an entire word here already that actually matches words in our document. But remember how before when we started typing, we got partial matches already? 
In this case, we don't get any partial matches as we type slowly. All we see are the completed words when they actually do form a match. There are times when this could be useful, but generally speaking, I just stick with the default of having that turned off. And I kind of like it when it shows me partial matches as well, especially if it's not a massive document, that's just fine. So what else have we got to look for? We can look for sounds like, so that brings up homonyms, things that uh, sound the same. And also we can use all word forms, so that will search for things with ing, uh, ed, plurals, and that kind of thing. Now in this case, since we have Latin text, that's not going to work very well, so that's not going to be much help to us. What we could take a look at, though, is the advanced find and replace. Now, if you've used find and replace in previous versions of Word, you'll recognize this right away as the old find and replace box. And it works just fine. It works just great. So if you prefer to use that instead, you can also find it under the edit menu. Find. Advanced find and replace. At the bottom of the menu, it's still available. But I'm sure you're all interested in looking at the new features for the time being. So let's take a look at those a little more closely. So now, once we've done some finding, that's great. But let's also do some replacing. What can we replace it with? Well, I just recently was looking around for some interesting lorem ipsum variations, and I found something about cupcake ipsum. So that was kind of cute, I thought. So let's try changing some of this text to cupcake ipsum right now. So if I want to replace one word at a time, first of all, let's find which instance. As you can see, it kind of did a bit of an animation showing me that that's the one. And if you can see, you should be able to see this is a bit darker than the other one that's over here. That indicates that this is actually the one being uh, focused on at the moment. And down here, likewise, you will see that this is a little bit grayed, which indicates that this is the one that we're focusing on at the moment. So let's replace that one. And right away, we jump to the next one. And since we changed it, we're not able to find any more lorems, just that one other remaining lorem over here. So when we replace that, there'll be no more lorems. And we replaced all the lorems with cupcake. If, however, sometimes like I do, you have a terrible panic moment and realize, oh my gosh, I've done something really terrible, I shouldn't have done all that, what I should really do then is either undo or use Command Z, undo the replace. And thankfully, undo is my friend here, and I can undo all my replacements. Now, if you'll notice, the lorems came back, the cupcakes went away, but we are not having any highlighting left anymore. What's going on? Well, we need to run this function again. It's kind of a forward running function so when you go backward it doesn't know about the changes so once we find it again we return to the original state even more powerful than that is if you decide that you do want to replace everything with cupcakes and then with one fell swoop you can press this powerful button here powerful dangerous yes but again you have undo on your side so you don't need to worry too much and you can hit replace all and boom instantly cupcakes everywhere lorem gone now, before we move on to a different topic, I'd like to just talk about one more little thing. It's a little more advanced, but it's interesting to know, and so I think it might be valuable for me to mention it quickly here. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but if you take a look on the right-hand side here, uh, there is actually a little menu indicator. So let's actually see what happens if we pull that down, and we get an interesting listing of a whole bunch of non-typical kinds of characters. And these are some of our invisible characters that we can see if we have invisible characters turned on. Now. What this also indicates is that I can go in here and I can search not just for a word, but I can also search for its punctuation. So let's say in this case, I happen to know that one of the cupcakes we replaced actually has a period, but let's pretend that we don't want a period. Instead, I'm thinking of this one over here, then what we want instead is to make it cupcake ellipses. So cupcake ellipses meaning dot, dot, dot. So we're searching for cupcake, and we're going to replace cupcake with cupcake ellipses. So this is actually not really a word. It's actually a word and punctuation combined. Now, it's actually searching for the wrong one. So let me actually make sure I've got the period in here. And in this case, it identified the one I was thinking of. And it's going to replace its punctuation as well as the word. It's a bit overkill to replace the word and the punctuation. If we just do the punctuation by itself, it'll select all the periods throughout. But in this case, we can be much more unique and specific. And we only have one replacement. So even if I hit replace all, it's going to do it correctly for us. And there it is.
So hopefully that gives you a sense of the superpowers that are now built into this version of Microsoft Word's find and replace functions. And if you do like the old functions, not a problem. Feel free to revert to the old find and replace under the advanced find and replace as we looked at earlier. So edit, find, advanced find and replace. If that makes you feel better, not a problem. Don't worry about it. Just feel free to use what works best for you.